We have a very special draft today. Very simply put, we're going through all the decades of the NBA from the 80s till current day. We're going to draft one player from every decade to build the best lineup possible. It's a, it's a snake style draft. Of course, we're joined by some special co-host, uh, Amir. If you guys are a newer fan, you know Amir every single Thursday. Amir, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm ready to lock in. I'm happy to be back. Absolutely. And then we're joined also by an OG co-host in Bakari. He could be the most responsible for why the podcast is where it is today. How you doing, Bakari? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, I'm glad you introduced me as the OG co-host because you know that OG fork coming out. So everything is OG now. That's kind of what we're going to get on after this pod, but we're going to take care of some business here first. But then first time co-host here, of course, 1.8 thousand subs in. It's never too late to join. Zach, a good friend of the show, a longtime supporter. <laughs> Zach, how you doing today? And I guess introduce yourself here to the podcast. Doing great, man. Thank you for having me on today, Owen. Looking forward to making these picks, making a great team. Uh, excited to be on the pod. Uh, hashtag road to 2K, man. Road to 2K, 1.8. Of course, by this point, we might already be there. Uh, we're recording this a little bit early, of course. But like I said, very simply put, we're going through the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. And we're going to draft a five-man lineup. We're going to have a six-man as well when we get to that point. Uh, but as you see on your screen, <laughs> draft board, one player from each decade. And there is no duplicates. So if you draft Michael Jordan in the t uh, 2020s, of course, he wasn't playing in the 2020s. Uh, no, Nobody else can take Michael Jordan. So no, one version of LeBron, one version of Jordan, Kobe, et cetera. Very simply put, we did the draft order off the camera. I had the number one pick. Of course, it's not rigged. And I am going to start this off with the best player I've ever seen with my two eyes, either the 2012 or the 2018 version of LeBron James. Of course, my goal, we're going to take LeBron here to kick off my team as a, uh, is there anybody else to go with? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, Zach, you're up for one. Yeah, of course, if you're ready. Yeah, man, of course I'm ready. I think there's only one right answer here. I have to go with 1990s Michael Jordan. I mean, six time NBA champ finals, MVP, 14-time All-Star, just all around a great player. Not to mention all-defensive team, too. I think like nine or ten times. I mean, all in that decade, too. So you can't really go wrong, uh, of course, with uh, most people's GOAT. But Amir, you're up for one. And then Bakari, you're on deck for two. Of course, uh, these are where it, it starts to get interesting. Number one and number two are pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can go, go a couple different ways. But Amir, you're on the clock for one. Um, yeah, so for my pick, um, I'm going to go with somebody that's irreplaceable. And I think, you know, it'll give me the advantage, you know, no matter what team I match up against. So I'm going to go ahead and go 2000 Shaq here. 2000 Shaq. Uh, oh, of course, okay. I was I was waiting to see where he went. If I had the number three pick, that would have been my pick as well. Uh, but you really there's not a matchup for Shaquille O'Neal, uh, the most dominant player in NBA history, no doubt. But a Bakari, you're up for two here and. This is going to be, I think, the turning point of the draft where it kind of sets our draft for the rest of the way because we get to see where you, you know, where you go with these two picks. Of course, a lot of players in NBA history, but who is on your draft board here for two picks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pick my backcourt here. Uh, I'm actually going to pick um, either 2015 or 2016 Stephen Curry uh, yeah. as my point guard um, in 2010s. And then for the 2000s, we're going to go ahead and get uh, we're going to go ahead and get Kobe Bryant. Um, I feel like I needed to get my uh, backcourt situated. Um, and I, why not, you know, kind of go down or uh, start from the, you know, second most recent era. Yeah. I mean, uh, 2006 Kobe Bryant, <laughs> maybe the most, mo maybe the most dominant offensive uh, score we've ever seen at the highest level. Of course, he was averaging like 30 points a game when teams were only averaging 88 to 90. Uh, so, so great pick. You got your backcourt there. That is going to be hard to beat. Maybe the two greatest guards of all time. <laughs> but Amir, you have Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, of course, aside from uh, hack a shack, we got to, you know, you got to round out your team so your team becomes unstoppable. How are you going to surround Shaquille O'Neal here? Yeah, so actually right here, um, you know, I think it's a lot harder to find value in the 80s. So I'm going to knock my 80s pick out the way and then go ahead and get Magic. Magic Johnson. That was, I was, yeah, that I was the open. He got back to yeah, me. Yeah, that was going to be my next pick. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was here. thinking for instead of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh zach you have michael jordan of course uh, a lot of opinions about michael jordan a gambler but who are you going to gamble with and surround jordan with here do you go with scotty pippen scotty pippen and them won a couple championships together you know i, I was thinking scotty pippen here just for the defensive aspect as well as being a great scorer but i'm gonna have to go with steph curry here in the 20 in the uh 2010s yes uh, would be a great pick 
but he <laughs> went to Bukhari. <laughs> oh, that's my bad. <laughs> that's a Palaban Cheryl moment for uh, Amir just uh, last Tuesday. <laughs> that, I, Same thing, not, man. I, was, I zoned out. I forgot Bakari even picked stuff. That is my bad. Well, in that case, I am going to go. <clears throat> man. You got time. You got time. You can always talk to us about what you're thinking about, of course, uh, who you're kind of narrowing <clears throat> it down to. And, uh, of course, I want all the insight. I'm next up. So, please let me know what you're thinking. You know, I, I was thinking here, leaning towards Larry Bird, because I just needed some offense on that team, really get some offensive firepower going. So, I think I'm going to go – I think 80s, we can go ahead and put Larry Bird up there. Larry Bird, of course. A fun fact, he was uh, – the, the reason why Twitter's logo was a bird, uh, for those that didn't know. But let me know what you guys – I need some time to think here. Let me know what you guys think about, I guess, your starts to the draft or even, I guess, the Larry Bird selection here early on. Uh, but just give me a moment here. I don't know, man. Larry Bird – no, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you in on, on the inside of my draft. Uh, I Like I said, I was going to pick either Steph or uh, Magic, but I figured – I wanted a prolific shooter. And, uh, you know, I, I remember the draft we did this past Tuesday uh, was full of just, you know, just straight uh, slashers and, and you know, um, hi human highlight films. But I wanted to get a prolific three-point shooter out there uh, or off rip. And why not get the best, you know, three-point shooter in NBA history? I mean, uh, that's that's a great argument. You can't really go wrong, um, of course, with uh, with getting the greatest shooter of all time and maybe the greatest player of all time, depending on – uh, how much of a faithful Laker fan you run into. <laughs> but here at the turn, you know, honestly, I know LeBron, he needs that back line of defense because we know LeBron, he carries a lot of the offensive load. And this is also a guy that sometimes, well, most of the time actually uh, takes defensive possessions off, of course, if a call doesn't go his way. So we're going to need it. it Maybe, you know, the most underrated player of all time to back end our defense, a guy that could have won multiple MVPs. I know he won multiple championships and defensive player of the years in this decade. We're going to go with Tim Duncan for the 2000s. Oh, good. Of course, pick. Uh, good two, pick. You know, 2003 or 2001 or two MVP. <clears throat> uh, I know KG was in that mix as well for many, many years. Uh, you guys, you could really go with either one. And uh, it's not that big of a difference. But I'm going to go with Tim Duncan here. And then I was looking, you know, I said, hey, we need a guy that can take the load off of, uh, you know, uh, LeBron James here. I got to do what I think from time do. to time. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Michael. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, you know, I, there's a, there's a couple different options here. Of course, I already have 2000s and, and uh, 2010s on lockdown. So now it's like, you know, do I want to, you know, just go modern day and get my score, which th th those are the most advanced scores we've ever seen in today's game. But at the same time, the eighties is super limited where it's kind of like, man, you've really got to take your guys from the eighties. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted Bird, in, in all honesty, and I wanted Magic as well. So I'm going to say that LeBron's going to be my three, or LeBron could even run my point guard. I think that also could be a direction I take. So LeBron might be my point. Tim Duncan is going to be my four. And just for the talent aspect, I'm going to go Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, Luau Cinder. Of course, I don't know why that, that font is crazy. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm, you know, my team's a little funky on paper. I'll say that. It's a little funky on paper, but... We can make it work, especially if LeBron's at the point. We're going to be a very big team here in the all decades draft. Zach, you have Larry Bird, Michael Jordan. Uh, who who are you going to round out this team with? Of course, you need some youth there, as uh, right now you just have arthritis. <laughs> I get what you're saying, Owen. And this next pick, I feel like, is going to be very controversial. Uh, this is going to be almost, I'm not going to say a Kendrick Perkins level take, but we're working our way there. Uh, I'm for 20, for 2000s, I'm actually going to go with AI. Put him in at the point. Uh, oh, Iverson, Alan Iverson, of course, the answer. artificial intelligence. I, I want. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Amir, <laughs> Corey, what are your thoughts on Alan Iverson going here in the third round? Did you see that happening? And I guess um, maybe were you guys trying to get Alan Iverson because uh, Zach also we nobody else could have taken a two thousands player. You could have waited for that selection, but I guess you know. I guess there's always a possibility someone takes the nineties version of AI. Um. I guess I want Amir and Bakari. What are your thoughts on the Allen Iverson selection here? Um, honestly, you know, I feel like you could have went a better direction just for the simple fact that you know AI is a is a calling on defense and also you know a, a limited playmaker. You know, especially you got MJ and Bird. You know, guys who weren't primary playmakers on their team. I feel like you could have went with a better playmaker to kind of you know lead that you know lead the offense and play off of him. And. That is why I did. I remembered I uh, I picked AI and I believe it was a twenty a two thousands draft a while back. 
for the OG fans who remember on the pod, I took AI and I got slandered for it uh, and my team. But, uh, you know, so I, I learned my lesson with taking AI. Absolutely. So I think I'm going to have to just learn my lesson and uh, take my L with this one, but <laughs> I'll die on that hill. I mean, I mean, the only person, you know, I mean, Allen Iverson could cross over anybody, but uh, yeah, I mean, like technically you surrounded him with OK defense and Larry Bird and of course, Michael Jordan. But Amir, you're here with Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, two Laker legends. Uh, who, how are you going to surround this out here? You have two guys, of course, that can do a little bit of everything. Aside from Shaq, he can't shoot the three. Yeah, so, um, you know, for my next pick, you know, I'm going to go with fit here. Um, and also, you know, for, for some length on my team, pause. And so I'm going to go with the third best player in the 2010s. So I'm going to get Kevin Durant here. Kevin Durant in the 2010s. I love the start to the draft so far. Of course, you have maybe the greatest isolation score of all time next to maybe one of the greatest uh, 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 facilitators, if I can't talk. I was going to say, I was trying to say playmakers and facilitators in one word. But uh, you have a great one, of maybe the best point guard, isolation score, and most dominant force the game's ever seen. Can't really go wrong <laughs> with that start to the draft. Bakari, you're up next here. And I guess let us know where you're going to go with this next pick. Yeah, so I'm actually going to take my 80s player um, with this pick. Uh, and, you know, I was looking, I needed, I wanted, you know, to get one of my big men out of the way here for sure. And I think that's what I'm going to do, or I know that's what I'm going to do with my 80s pick. But, you know, I really couldn't think off the top of my head. It took me a while to think of, you know, popular big men who who were also pretty dominant in the in the 80s. And, I mean, you know, guys like Hakeem did get drafted in the 80s, but, you know, that's 84. So, you know, right. they, they weren't, they were just entering their prime in the 90s. And that's where you most remember them. So I'm actually going to take a player who, you know, is it's going to be a little bit surprising, but I'm going to take Moses Malone. Uh, this is a guy who's averaged 25 and 15 <laughs> in a season. Uh, you know, he, he he's done it all. He's he's in the record books. Um, and I feel like his prime it was perfectly in that in that 80s period of basketball. And, you know, that late 70s, 80s period of basketball where I feel like I'd be getting the best version of a big, um, you know, to fill my team. And, uh, you know, for my I believe my 2010s pick, I'm also going to go ahead and take my second big. and I'm going to get Giannis Attendacupo here. Uh, 2010s or 2020s? Uh, 2020s. 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 Okay. Go yes. Ahead. Um, yeah, I want to take Giannis here. Um, we all know how, uh, you know, how much of a monster this guy is. Uh, he, you know, for years, everybody's been saying if he gets a jump shot, he's going to be deadly. Well, he's in like his 10th year, uh, 10th or 11th year and has not gotten a jump shot. And he is still deadly uh, with multiple time MVP, multiple time deploy uh, finals MVP. This guy's done it all in a short period of time. Amir. Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Durant. We're winding down here on picks, but who are you going to go with here? It looks like you need a little bit of wing play. Uh, so what direction are you going to go here for the 90s and or 2000s? So um, here, wait, and so I can choose my six man. It could be anybody, correct? Correct. It could be anybody from any era. Uh, but, you know, again, that's <laughs> uh, how early do you want to pick your six man is a good question. Well, I'm actually going <laughs> to save my six man for now. And, um... You know, you know, there's a couple of good directions I can go here. And so, man, so I think, you know, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, pick somebody who was, you know, at the beginning of their prime, who was still, you know, a, a top three to top five. Actually, you know what? You know, I'm going to go big here. I'm going to go ahead and grab Hakeem from the 90s. Hakeem from the 90s, honestly, it was him or Kareem for me, and I honestly regretted the Kareem pick, at least now. But, of course, we have a long way to go. Interesting dynamic there, though, with Hakeem Olajuwon and Shaquille <laughs> O'Neal. Those, those are crazy twin towers right there. I mean, uh, how do you think that's going to work offensively, Amir? I mean, both of them are on the low block, and, uh, I mean, honestly, if you could just throw three, four bodies down there, you might be able to shut down the offense. You know, well, I mean, it's not going to be hard. I mean, you, you could play, you know, Hakeem from the high post and kind of space out a little bit. You know, you'll have KD moving off ball. Spacing everything out, and I got a pick coming up later. You know that that was an elite three point shooter. You know in his prime that also space everything out. Absolutely, uh, Zach, AI, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird. Looks like you need some front court play there, uh, and we're kind of all taking the bigs from you. Who are you looking at here? As of course you have, you need a modern big. Is a good way to put it. Yeah, I think the, the big I'm going to go with here, and this is especially controversial given the uh, times right now and everything swirling around about him. But I, I think I'm going to go with D12 here. Great rim. <laughs> Didn't even have to say it. Owen already knew. Typed it in. Uh, great rim protector. Also can score when needed. 
Uh, great defensive player. I think he'll round out my team really nice. Absolutely. Uh, but now I'm back up here for two. And uh, there's a couple different options I can go with for the 90s. Um, so I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get a guy that I believe I can stick on a Michael Jordan, a Kobe Bryant, uh, even I guess a Kevin Durant at times. I'm going to go with maybe the best defender in the entire 90s decade. I'm going to go with Scottie Pippen, you know, a guy that, again, is he going to shut down these elite stars? No, but he can also limit them, and he can also space out the floor and shoot the three at least a little bit. Of course, if he's shooting it at the 2K level, this this will be an amazing pick. But Scottie Pippen, for me, he's going to be able to shoot the three when nice enough, and he's a selfless player where he's going to do the dirty work for our team, and all good teams need that dirty work guy. So now we have a two 2020s pick and a sixth man pick. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm stuck here between two players from the 2010s that I want to come off of my bench. And again, I can go with a guy like Carmelo Anthony, right? Of course, uh, the greatest player of all time. Uh, hopefully he comes out of retirement one day. But I am going to go with a guy that is going to be the picture perfect fit next to LeBron James. This is a guy that's going to be my sixth man, but don't be mistaken. He can play at the beginning of the games in certain games and certain lineups. This is a guy that we can throw next to LeBron. He's got another selfless player. He's going to catch and shoot three. Some would say he's maybe the, the uh, I guess pretty, he has the prettiest shot in NBA history. Clay Thompson. I'm going to go with prime Clay Thompson, a guy that was so pivotal on that Warriors dominant run. Prime? Maybe they still have a little bit left in the tank. I'm sorry. What was that? No, I'm playing. No, I didn't know what you said. Go ahead. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, I said prime question mark, but you know, no disrespect to Clay there. I mean, in his prime, does dude with average over 20 points per game shooting the three at 45%? I, you know, I'm shooting like eight to 10 a game. So, I mean, Clay Thompson is, uh, you know, honestly, maybe the, he's, he's no doubt the second best shooter of all time in my eyes. And uh, again, picture perfect fit next to LeBron. He brings the much uh, needed spacing next to guys like Scotty, Kareem, and Tim Duncan. So that's going to be our sharpshooter there. We still have some more shooters that we're going to add to this roster, or at least one more. But, Zach, you have, it looks like, Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Dwight Howard. Are you going to get another wing here, or you're looking more so towards the big side of things? Uh, where are you going to go for your 2020s or your six-man? You know, I, I was looking at 2020s and really leaning in towards that. And uh, I, I'm kind of stuck here. I want to really want to go in the big man front court. Originally, I was going to go with, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge, but I realized that's more of a 2010s type pick. Uh, doesn't really apply to the 2020s, you know, current day. So it's still kind of struggling uh, with where to go on this one. But I think, oh, man, I'm kind of stuck between two guys right now, leaning between Zion, <laughs> uh, if he's healthy. If that's the key word there, along with Anthony Davis as well as he's healthy. Two very different play styles, but, you know, kind of kind of stuck between two guys. But I think I'm going to go ahead and go with AD. Hey, Anthony uh, Davis? Uh, he's getting, of course, street clothes Davis, Day to Davis, Disney Day Davis. Day Davis. A couple of different nicknames there, but we know when Anthony Davis is playing aggressive, he's a top five level player in basketball. So, uh, of course, a great pick there. But Amir, you're up here. Uh, of course, it looks like you need a little bit of spacing for those two twin towers. Uh, you have a 2020s pick and a sixth man pick. Which direction are you going to go here? Of course, that, 20, that six man could be anybody. Yeah, so actually for my 2020s here, um, you know, I'm going to go, you know, big here again. And I'm actually going to move this guy to my two. I'm going to get a guy who, um, you know, who has one of the greatest peaks of all time, not necessarily primes because it was so short, but peaks here. And I'm going to go Kawhi Leonard for the 2020s. Kawhi Leonard, again, another player that when he's healthy and he's actually playing basketball and being aggressive. I mean, this is a guy that took a game off of the Suns last year, and there was a small chance there. Bakari and I, of course, we were recording the next uh, couple of days. There was a small percentage of uh, that we were starting to think, maybe Kawhi can get this done with Russ. Uh, but, of course, Kawhi went down, and all those injuries kind of, uh, I guess, went away there. But my question to you, Amir, is why not go all-time prime Kawhi? We'll go with, like, your tw the 2010s, 2019 version of Kawhi and your six-man and grab another play in the 2020s. That's my question to you. Well, I mean, the biggest reason why is because, I mean, you know, Kawhi provides defense that, you know, I feel like all the other top guys in the 2020s, you know, the wings don't provide. And also, you know, in the earlier 2020s, he was still, you know, towards the end of his peak. You know, he was still shooting like 40 percent from three, was still elite on both sides of the ball. And I feel like with my six man, I could find value somewhere else. Absolutely. Bakari, though, you're here and you're going to be the first person to get to close off your lineups. Looks like you have uh, your two bigs and your two guards. 
Do you go with a traditional center here? Uh, maybe a guy that's a bit has a little bit of height to him, or do you go with just another wing guy that can do a little bit of everything here? Uh, well, my traditional center is uh, Moses Malone. Okay, um, I just and... figured with him being six nine, how is he going to hold up against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that hook shot? But again, that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> um, you know, I think I'm going to be sleep on Kareem's hook shot, knowing that that is old Kareem. And I do have a monster that uh, if, if Kareem ever saw Giannis coming downhill, uh, he, he might have a heart attack on the court and might not wake back up. But um, <clears throat> I think for my 90s player, I am going to go ahead and take somebody who was in the shadow of Michael Jordan his entire career. Um, and not, not not and this is not the guy who played on his team. Let me get that out the way. Um, this is somebody who Michael Jordan was compared to and unfortunately had to make a statement in the finals. But I feel like this is a really, uh, you know, um, uh, underrated player because of who else was in his era. And I'm going to take Clyde Drexler here, a little bit of a surprise player. But, um, you know, he he I feel like he's going to be able to play that wing role really good for me. Obviously, a lot I could have stoppers. I, I, you know, and that's exactly what I was thinking when I was uh, thinking about my six man. Um, and I, that's why I'm going to have Jason Kidd come off my bench. We're talking about a guy Amazing who pick. went to back to back finals. And unfortunately, he had to play. Um, he had to play the uh, Spurs and the Lakers. So that's obviously not going to uh, be a be a great uh, outcome for him. But Jason Kidd, I feel like he's going to be able to come in uh, and he can rebound really well, too. So he can push the ball up the court and he doesn't need the ball in his hands. Um, all the time to make, uh, you know, to make everybody around him better. Absolutely. Amir, you have your six-man pick. Of course, any player, any era uh, to, I guess, go on your bench, you have a very well-balanced team in all honesty. But how do you close out the lineup here? Uh, maybe <laughs> grab another guard or so, so you can balance out that Twin Tower attack. Yep. That's exactly where I'm going here. So for my six-man, I'm going to get the guy who, you know, I think is a, you know, top five shooting guard ever, you know, which is undeniable. Also, you know, MVP, one of the greatest, <laughs> you know, offensive seasons we've ever seen in history. And, I, you know, we've seen him be able to make guys better. So I know for a fact, no matter what role he's in, that he can come off the bench. You know, he can even be in the lineup and play off of Magic, off ball, because, you know, he's that great of a score. And, you know, I know he can make an immediate impact. I uh, can't go wrong with prime James Harden. That's a dude that uh, single-handedly was taking that Golden State Warriors team, maybe the greatest assembled team of all time. Uh, he, he was taking them to the, you know, to the limit. And it was, uh, of course, a sight to see. But, Zach, you're here with your six man. Of course, same thing applies to you. Any play, any player, any era, which direction do you go here in uh, your, your last pick of your draft? Uh, I'm going to go with a guy that does a little bit of everything. Probably one of the best two-way players of the mid to late uh, 2010s, in my opinion. Great on defense, great on offense, and has the ability to take over a game. Uh, I'm going to go with Paul George here as my oh, six man. Oh, great pick. PG 13 getting picked no. up in a very shallow uh, Ooh, draft. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm only hating because that was going to be my 2020s pick. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, did, I didn't have him on the I didn't have him on the uh on the draft board for you guys because I was like, you know, I'm gonna sneak him in here. And uh, of course, I'm kind of surprised Bakari didn't take him. So <laughs> I'm back on the clock here. And uh, of course, LeBron's gonna be my point guard, and we're just gonna have nothing but defense and just size around LeBron James. But we also need someone that can take the pressure off of LeBron James and create his own shot and even at times take the game over. He's a three-level scorer, can do it at all levels. And, of course, I want to take Luka Doncic, uh, but he just – Luka and LeBron are not going to fit on a basketball court. Uh, yeah, you know, in all honesty, you know, the, the fan vote, when I think about that, who's going to win when it comes to the fan vote? I I'll let you guys know. I, I was going to take Devin Booker originally here, a guy that doesn't need the ball. But he, can, he can catch and shoot. Who? <laughs> Kobe, <laughs> Devin Booker can, can catch and shoot with the best of them in the NBA today, and of course he can also go out there and give you forty. Uh, he's one of the most he's one of the most underrated scores I think we've ever had. But you know, just for the the sake that you know, LeBron, you know, at sometimes he'll just give the ball up to Austin Reeves, and he'll give the, in his prime he give the ball up to Dwayne Wade and Kyrie to just do their thing. LeBron kind of spaces the floor. Uh, I think that can kind of happen here with Luka Doncic, and for the simple fact that I love Luka. We're going to go with Hookah Luka here as uh, it, the, the, the fit on my team. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but we can also run lineups where we have LeBron and Clay uh, out there with, you know, <laughs> Scottie Pippen, Tim Duncan, and Kareem. My team definitely is a, uh, a little bit of a crazy fit, but we have more size than anybody on this team and uh, or anybody on this board. 
And I honestly think that could be all oh, we need. Looking at his work. chops, looking at Luca lined up across from him. Right, Luka, Luka Doncic, <laughs> name one player on this board that is holding Luca under thirty points. I'll Kawhi. wait. I uh, you know, Kawhi right now is, is one Giannis, one bad Jason cut Kidd. away, one Kawhi. bad crossover away MJ. from hanging it up. And we are talking about a young man that does not do back to backs. I don't think anyone on this list can guard Luca straight up. Uh, nobody I can. Dirty. Nobody can. Oh like, man, prime Kobe. Uh, Kobe is rolling. I'm, I'm gonna Lil, hold my Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne is writing another song Why right is now. Putting that team. man in his place, send that man back to the Europe. <laughs> Kawhi <laughs> Leonard is not. <laughs> Kawhi <laughs> Leonard is not uh, built to guard Luka Doncic as we saw. He was. Uh, oh, we gonna give him some of that venom that come with Black Mambas, man. Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hold my oh, comments oh, on Kobe oh, Bryant oh, here. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we're back because, of course, I say this every time. I'm too broke to, uh, or too cheap is a better way to put it, to uh, buy Zoom Plus. And no, I will not buy Zoom Plus. But they can sponsor me, though. They can sponsor me, and then I will gladly promote it each and every show. <laughs> but we're back here. Of course, we all ran through our uh, decades draft here. Uh, of course, let us know down in the comments if you want us to do this with deeper rosters. Uh, but for right now, we only went through six. There's a lot of different drafts we can do here on the channel. But we need to close off our team. We need to close off our team with a guy that can either make or break our team. We've seen good teams in the past with terrible head coaches. Oh, well, you know, David Black comes to mind. But we've also seen terrible teams with great coaches like Eric Spolstra over the last couple of years where they really make all the difference. So for me, I need a head coach that is uh, going to understand LeBron James. And he's also going to let the stars be stars. And we need a system because uh, our team is definitely unorthodox. We're going to go with the greatest coach of all time. We're going to go with Greg Popovich, of course. Uh, Damn, he doesn't no, always no. have he, he doesn't <laughs> always balance the most stars, but this is a guy that's going to have a system for us, and at times he's going to let our stars be stars. So, coach, you had to put them boys here. in boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that's Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra is going to have uh, Shaq over here with uh, the 12% body fat. Uh, Zach, you're up here for a coach, unless you guys want to change the order around, but this is just, you know, we're, we're here. So pick a coach, Zach. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, oh, Dizzle, I think if we're on a train, keep it rolling. Uh, I'm going with a guy that just knows how to win six championships with the Lakers. Here comes uh, an Amir coach. Pat, oh. Pat Riley is going to be my oh coach. Oh, my like, gosh. Man. Are you like, serious? He's going to have a system that really reigns everyone in. Oh, puts my everyone goodness. In win. Amir, <laughs> you're up no, for I pick no. David Blatt? Amir. <laughs> Maybe bigger staff. <laughs> and, no, and no, you cannot take LeBron as your coach. No, I'm about to pick Coach Carter. No. <laughs> coach Carter is crazy. Uh, but, Amir, I mean, now Magic's, your, your, Magic's the biggest guy you got to worry about here. And, of course, Shaq with his attitude. How are you going to balance this out? I mean, James Harden, if he gets fed a salad, he might request a trade. Well, I mean, you know <laughs> – you know, hey, I, 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 I wasn't gonna go Greg Popovich. You know, you know, because he, he, man, this this is tough. He is the greatest coach of all time, and I have the greatest coach of all time with the greatest player of all time. So, um, go ahead though, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, yeah. So, uh, so for my pick, I mean, I gotta just go the best coach available. You know, I mean, I think he can he can, he can make it work. You know, I mean, he knows how to win. You know, um, you know, he, he has what a seventy percent win percentage in his career, and you know, he knows how to work wing work work with wings. You know, work with you know dominant defensive bigs and the inside. So I'm, I'm going to go with Phil Jackson here. Oh, Phil Jackson. <laughs> Sorry, talking no. about Ime <laughs> Udoka. But of course, oh, the three greatest coaches man. of all time are off the board. Bakari, uh, you have to find a, a a guy that can put some firepower oh, in, in Moses oh, Malone big, because he's going to have a long day. Uh, I think Bakari should go with the guy from Remember the Titans, even though it's a different sport. Denzel <laughs> 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 really Washington. Uh, I, I don't know. I think Samuel Jackson was the more intriguing coaching prospect uh, because, you know, he, he coached basketball. But um, in all seriousness, oh, excuse my um, – what's Step closer to here. the mic if you would so. Uh, <laughs> I believe that I'm going to take somebody who understands star players, and uh, I need somebody who's going to really be on the same – who already has a set chemistry with my point guard. And I'm going to take – yes, Tom Thibodeau. I am kidding. I'm going to take Steve Kerr. <laughs> Steve Kerr has shown that he can he can motivate his players to settle for a little bit less in order for his team to uh, win as a whole, and I believe that he can really open up uh, our players. For Absolutely. Me. Um. So I'll start with you, Bakari. Here, as we're here, you just got Steve Kerr. You kind of talked about how he's going to balance these stars. How? I guess one, give me your lineup, and then two, just talk about the draft and uh, I guess what went right for you, what what went wrong for you, if anything. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so my, my lineup is going to go as follows. It's going to be Steph Curry, uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, Clyde Drexler. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to be the four, and Moses is going to be the five. But obviously, um, you know, both of those guys are also primarily uh, um, um, inside guys. I mean, Giannis can penetrate from the perimeter uh, and, and take it inside. So that helps there. But uh, and, and, and obviously, Jason Kidd is my sixth man. But uh, my team, I, I really wanted to get uh, – if there was a – Obviously, with the fourth pick, um, generational talents is who I was wanted, who I wanted to get players who, um, you know, all time greats who who rose above and beyond. And I wanted to get I wanted to get a, a lockdown or a yeah, knockdown shooter. I mentioned that, but um, I think what I missed out on was a was a little bit of a better wing. Um, I, I actually contemplated going Reggie Miller instead of Clyde just because he he's another catch and shoot uh, three point uh, threat. But I went I just went with Clyde. Um, I figured uh, these are all guys who know how to win. So, um, you know, Steve Kerr should definitely help them. Uh, Amir, uh, you're up next year. Of course, you got Phil Jackson. Uh, he's going to have your players doing yoga before each and every game. But how is your lineup going to look, one? And, uh, of course, what went right and what went wrong in your draft here today? So, um, you know, from our lineup, you know, it, it looks interesting at first because I have two, you know, true centers. But you know, I'm going to go with Magic at the one, Kawhi at the two, Katie at the three, um, Hakeem at the four, and Shaq at the five. That's, you know, because Shaq only plays down low, you know, but I can kind of manipulate this team a little bit offensively. You know, I can have, you know, Hakeem in the high post, um, you know, kind of mess around with it. Um, you know, KD moving off ball, Kawhi moving around off ball, you know, two great shooters. And then, you know, Harden as my sixth man, you know, Harden come on, coming off my bench being you know, the great playmaker he is and great scorer he is, you know, my, my bench is going to see immediate results no matter who's around him regardless. And um, the one that went wrong for me, man, I went to Greg Popovich, you know, I feel like it would have been perfect. You know, he's he's a coach who who's shown he can he can manipulate and play with two dominant inside bigs, you know, with David Robinson and Tim Duncan. And he also groomed and pretty much, you know, built Kawhi to who he is today. That would have been the perfect um pick, but you know, I had this go with Phil Jackson because it was best available. Absolutely. Uh Zach, same thing here. Uh you you know, you had a questionable third round pick there. We all talked about it, but describe that pick for you. And I guess just, you know, describe your lineup one, but how did the draft go for you? And uh, do you stand by that third round selection at this point in the draft? Uh, you know, I really don't stand by that third round selection right now. Although, you know, AI is a phenomenal talent. He's not a great uh, playmaker for other players. I think I really should have went with someone uh, probably more like a Steve Nash or someone like that. That's a really good creator and can run an offense. Uh, I don't think AI was really that guy. Uh, second thing, second I think I really should have went with some more three-point shooting. Uh, you know, MJ wasn't really a great three-point shooter. Obviously, Bird was a great three-point shooter for the time. Uh, but I think that's another thing I should have focused on. But overall, I think I'm really happy with my sixth pick coming off the bench with PG-13, a guy that can really just do everything on the court. Uh, and he's really kind of a selfish player when he needs to be. He can be aggressive when he needs to be. And uh, also kind of regretting the AD pick right now, too. Uh, just, you know, over the course of an 82-game season, I might only see him 20 games. So not sure how that pick would plan out, but uh, very happy with my coach as well, Pat Riley. I feel like that's the next best coach I could have gotten behind Pop. So uh, overall, you know, I give myself a five and a half, maybe a six out of 10 on this one. I think you're being, I think you had a better draft than me on paper, but coming up here, you know, with my pick, I fell victim to what I think a mirror you had the problem with in our first ever 2010s draft. Uh, I think Bakari had this problem in our first ever draft of 2000s. And then, uh, of course, Amir, you had this problem with Luka Doncic in our recent draft last Tuesday where I just wanted to draft this LeBron, Luka archetype type of guy. And I wanted to be like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go against the odds and I'm actually going to build a good team with a ball dominant player like, you know, Luka or LeBron James. Uh, and, I, you know, I think that's where my draft went wrong. Now, in retrospect, I would much rather have started with MJ in the 90s and built around that way. But regardless, we're going to have in our backcourt, of course, LeBron and Luka. You can mix and match that however you want with Scottie Pippen if Scottie's running the two or three. Uh, but I think we have two guys that can run this offense, and especially under an offense with Popovich, where he does know how to work with two bigs. And David Robinson and Tim Duncan, a good point there. Whoever pointed that out, I think it was Amir. Um, but then we also have two guys that can take over the game. I mean, 2018 LeBron was a one-man show. Luka Doncic is doing that on a nightly basis, if not at a more dominant level. Uh, so, I mean, we, we have two guys that can take over games, and we also have the defense to lock down any team, aside from, of course, Luka. But if Luka's giving us issues, we can throw in Klay Thompson, an all-NBA defender, and, of course, a guy that shoots the three ball with the best of them. 
Uh, we have Popovich to run the show with a lot of you know <laughs> defense. Do we lack you know? Do we lack spot up shooting off in in the starting five? Yeah, but again, if Luca's giving us issues or if Scotty's giving us issues, we'll swap them out with Clay Thompson. So, hey, I, hey, I'm doing the Andre Drummond. I'm I'm waving them off and walking to the basket, getting the board off them shots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, Kareem Kareem can step out, you know, 15 feet, you know, same oh, as Tim Duncan. Man. They can step out to the little the, the little you know dunker spot ish. A little, you know, uh, between the the corner three and the paint, of course, I think they can both spread out at least that far where LeBron can still dominate. Uh, Scotty can, of course, shoot the three. And we still have Luca and Clay to, uh, I guess, roam around the top and and, uh, dominate that way. But, uh, yeah, definitely a funky start. I definitely wish I started with MJ more. And uh, for that reason, I think I'll probably have the worst overall draft. But uh, overall, (laughs) I want to thank you guys for coming out for the draft. Uh, of course, if, if this was Amir's idea. I can't believe we got this far into the episode without mentioning that. So, Amir, shout out to you. Uh, of course, this was your idea. It was super fun. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, any last thoughts? Oh, we're giving me? a little bit too much credit, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> any, any last thoughts before we get out of here from uh, the three of you guys? Hey, man, I love, you know, I love being on this pod, you know, with everybody here, man. It, it feels great, you know, for all of us being reunited, being able to talk sports. You know, I feel like that's a dream for anybody to be able to go on a podcast and talk sports. So. I'm happy to be here. Uh, Bakari, how you doing here? I know it's uh, uh, another day for you as you, of course, make time for the pod. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, echoing what Amir said, you know, it's, it's fun. Uh, the more people on the pod, the better. You know, we, we all know each other, obviously, outside of the pod. Um, so that's what makes it, it, it a lot more fun when we come in and, and do uh, this sports talk, this uh, <laughs> these, these fantasy drafts, and we get to, you know, kind of clown each other for certain picks or, or certain opinions. But, you know, that's, that's, that's the joy of it. And, uh, you know, it, it's great. Like like Jack said it way earlier in the pod, you know, road to 2K, it, it doesn't even sound real, but, um, you know, here we are. Yeah, I mean, both of you guys, of course, I want to thank you. Of course, each and every episode, you guys can make time. Uh, Amir, of course, you just won 77 to, to zero or whatever the score was in your game. Uh, but <laughs> both, for the both of you guys, that you know, you guys are super busy, but you guys have also been super pivotal in the podcast's growth, of course, uh, on the road to 2K. But, Zach, first podcast here, overall thoughts before we get out of here. Again, thank you for making time and I guess being interested in uh, this podcast's growth. Yeah, man. Oh, and I really appreciate it. I know we tried to work it out in the spring, but, you know, class schedule wasn't really working out the recording times. But I really enjoyed my experience. Like like uh, Bakari mentioned earlier, we're all friends outside of the pod. Uh, so it's nice to be able to come in here and it's more just uh, doing what we normally do, just talking sports, relax, relaxing. But uh, now we're just putting a camera on it. But great experience. I hope to be back in the future. Yeah, but we're, we're going to have a lot of, uh, inter, you know, you guys on a lot of podcasts here coming up soon. Uh, of course, Amir, we'll see you Thursday. But until Thursday, uh, we'll see you guys then. Stay happy, stay healthy, uh, get out of here.